Hello, everybody. Uh, today we're going to look at some examples of molecular symmetry using this really nice website, simotter.org. So this website has three main sections. So one looking at tutorials and um, focusing on symmetry elements, uh, one on a gallery of molecules that have various symmetries, and the third being a challenge on identifying the symmetry elements that a molecule contains. Um, so we'll just look through each of those quite quickly. Um, so in terms of the tutorial, um, it's covering the four basic symmetry elements and operations that we covered in my class. And so you have a reflection plane, um, sigma, an inversion center, I, a proper rotation axis, Cn, and an improper rotation axis, Sn. And for each of those, you have a different section where it gives you a an example molecule. So in this case, we have a chloroplatinate complex. And when you hit play, it shows you the application of that symmetry operation. So we have an inversion center at, this, well, at the center of the molecule, and that inverts all of the chlorines. So it goes from left to right, from top to bottom. And you can go through each of these sections on the left, and it will give you examples um, for each operation. Okay. Then for the gallery, so there's quite an exhaustive list of point groups, and you'll see examples of molecules that have each of those point groups um, in real life. So maybe, so for example, starting with a linear case, so carbon dioxide, so quite a simple molecule, so OCO, and that can be classified as D infinity H in terms of its point group. And this website allows you to look at each of the individual symmetry elements. And so you can just hit play, and then you'll see the application um, of that symmetry operation. So it's a really neat way of decomposing um, each of the underlying symmetry elements in a complex molecule. So they're not all as simple as CO. So if I go to an octahedral complex, let's take this mm, sort of vanadium phosphate system. You can see it's a lot trickier to see possibly what symmetry operations exist. Um, so you can go through each one. So we, there's a C3 rotation axis. You can hit play. You can see that operation. And you can also get it to show the symmetry element itself. So that's the C3 rotation axis. And then hitting play applies a C3 operation. So you can spend quite a bit of time in the gallery mode, but really, I guess, to test your understanding um, there's the challenges. So with the challenges, you have a whole host of molecules. Um, you choose one, and then you have to try to answer a set of questions based on what symmetry elements it contains, and then you assign the point group. So this is following the sort of standard flowchart for assigning molecular symmetry but it's a good way of checking that you're actually following all the core concepts. Okay, so I know how to take it easy. So I'm going to start with a relatively simple case. So benzene, well, it should be simple. So we can see here's a benzene molecule. So C6H6. And the first question, does this molecule have an infinite rotation axis? So C infinity. I would say no, because an infinite axis is only present for a linear molecule, so where you can infinitely rotate. Um, so in this case, I would say no to that question. Does this molecule contain two or more unique C3 axes? So looking through the center here, I definitely see a six-fold rotation axis. And if I look at the side, I see a two-fold rotation axis, but I do not see two or more unique C3 axes. So I'm going to be bold and say no. Okay, select the highest order proper rotation axis, Cn, 
if there are any present. And as I said, so if I look through benzene this way, I see a six-fold rotation axis. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a hexagon. So I'm going to say six. Then the question is, are there six C2 axes perpendicular to the highest order axis? So if this is the C6 axis, I'm going to go perpendicular. Okay, and looking through this hydrogen, um, yes, there's a C2 axis, and there's a C2 axis basically through each hydrogen. So you can rotate the molecule 180 degrees and it remains unchanged. So I would answer yes to that question. Uh, now, does the molecule contain a horizontal reflection plane? So this would be horizontal to the uh, principal rotation axis. So we have a C6 axis going through here. And now it's saying, is there a reflection plane perpendicular to that? So that would be horizontal. And yes, there is. So we could draw a line through this benzene. It's sort of a trivial um, reflection plane, but it reflects the top to the bottom. So I would say yes to that. And that seems to be going through the flow chart. That's all the questions we have to answer. And um, this uniquely determines the point group to be D6H. And then the moment of truth. Yes. So luckily we answered correctly. And by hitting play. Oh, well, I should do it on one. So the C6. So that's the C6 axis we chose. And are there six C2 axes? And then you see examples of those. And that's basically it. So you have a chance to click through different molecules to see if you can spot the various symmetry elements that they contain. And that's one of the best ways to get comfortable. Of course, in material science, um, you don't have to be so good at identifying the point group itself because you don't spend too much time thinking about molecules. But these sim symmetry elements do occur in crystals. Um, and they occur in things such as grain boundaries and dislocations. So being able to identify quite quickly what symmetry elements are present can really help you in your, I guess, learning and research in material science. So that's all for today, and thanks for your attention.